Hi everyone. Well, guess what I'm holding? For those of you that are familiar with RV10s, you'll probably recognize it. It's the first part that you build in a kit. It's the vertical stabilizer. So you're probably wondering, what am I doing with this? Well, you know, when Carol and I were at AirVenture this past summer, walked around and saw a lot of airplanes again and saw some new kits and uh, kind of got the urge to build again. I know what you're thinking. We just finished the helicopter. But, uh, you know, I got all these tools. Carol's got a couple sewing machines. So we thought, why not? And uh, started talking about it. And I just happened to be perusing Barnstormers one afternoon and uh, found an unopened kit down in Florida at Spruce Creek. Actually been there for about two years. And uh, it was everything except the finished kit. All the boxes had never even been opened. Still had the straps around them. So we looked at each other and said, why not? We drove down to Florida and we got a U-Haul and we drove back in a pretty good rainstorm the whole way. Here we are talking about all this during Hurricane Helene. So uh, we got it home. And by the way, it had a brand new engine from Lycoming in a box unopened, as well as a brand new hard cell propeller. And uh, the gentleman who was selling it, or sold it to us, being an engineer, actually replaced all of the LCP parts in the kit. So about $6,000 worth of LCP parts. So we're going to end up with a new RV-10 with no LCP parts. And uh, I'm thinking what we might do is, I know what you're thinking, we just put a new panel, a new interior in our current RV-10. But we are using it quite heavily, and I just didn't want to sell it till we get this one further along. So, but uh, I think I'm going to take this new engine, this new hard cell propeller, and put it in our current RV-10. And I've already spoken with Lycoming about getting a reman process going for the Thunderbolt engines, because in a year, hopefully, I'll be ready to do that. So somebody's going to get a nice RV-10 with a new engine, new interior, and a new panel, new propeller in the not-too-distant future. And hopefully, uh, for our retirement, we're going to end up with a new RV-10 to continue some of those uh, trips we like going. So and tell uh, them what the negative is. It's a slow build. Yeah. yeah. We haven't done a slow build in a long time. Yeah, Carol's right about that. That's the only thing I want to ooh about. I've always done the quick builds, except for the RV4, of course, and uh, uh, the RV6. So uh, it was somewhat a quick build. I think we might have got wings for that one. I don't remember. No, I actually remember doing jigs for the wings. So anyway, yes, this one's a complete slow build. So it's going to be a lot of work. But, uh, you know, I was able to turn the helicopter out in about 1900 hours so we'll see what happens with this one and uh should be fun although it is work i'm not good at repetition so i told carol she's gonna have to put up with me complaining but here's my reason for sharing all this with you one of the other reasons that driving doing another rv10 is you know with about 3600 hours now in rv10s i have yet to find a better four seat general aviation airplane and uh, that's, you know, I've flown about 74 different types in a little over 11,000 hours now. And uh, the RV-10 just keeps coming up roses. So what better way to uh, end up with an airplane we really like uh, to support a company, Vans, that we've really had a great time with through the 40 years of building. And then, you know, being a DAR, uh, we completed our, this RV-10 about 14 years ago. And, you know, as I've said in the past, the whole cottage industry out there supporting the RVs is really what makes the RVs so neat. It's all the aftermarket stuff. And as a DAR, I see so many exciting things out there and I go, hmm, I wish that was around when I built mine. So we're going to try and incorporate a lot of those things into this RV10. So certainly welcome any comments from any of you on things you've done what you maybe wouldn't do again, or what you wish you had done, or you would do again. So welcome some feedback, and uh, we're going to let you know the things that we do elect to choose to put in here, and why, what's driving our choices, and uh, help, you know, we're just going to do videos every once in a while. I'm not going to do a build video. There's plenty of uh, websites out there and columns on building an RV-10. So I don't want to upstage them. We'll just share with you some of the things that I do differently. As an example, the rudder trim. I know many of you have uh, copied my rudder trim. I've used that on three of the RVs now. It works wonderfully. I've already got the vertical done, and I've got the rudder skins done, and I managed to get the rudder trim done already. So I'll share that with you in upcoming videos. But we wanted to get this out there and let you know 
the workshop is back alive at the Syracuse house and we'll be sharing things with you. Thanks.